Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Narrow Gate with Andrew Crossy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, this is a wee video, um, just the Pyrenees River flowing behind me. And behind me up here is the grotto. And up here, you see the statue of Our Lady. This is where the Blessed Mother appeared to Bernadette many years ago. And had Bernadette scraped this ground for this constant flow of water, which has been flowing today, this flow of it's holy water, it's grace, blessed water from heaven that flows to this day. It's amazing, truly amazing. And thousands come into these baths, many, many miraculous healings. Please pray for Lourdes. Um, please pray for all of our church leaders. Um, the leaders in truth, the leaders in truth. There's a lot of deception in the world. And remember, the Lord says, if they hated me, they'll hate you. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. So why would one try to fit in to the ways of the world? Why would one not want to stand out for God, to stand in truth? Um, are we truly standing in Christ if we're not speaking the truth in our heart? I believe not to speak the truth in your heart is to die within. I really believe that it's a, an interior song that's unsung um, because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And our goal is to love and serve God, to to serve Christ here on earth, to be the imitation of Christ on earth. So this little video here is, I just had this here moment yesterday outside the grotto, and it's it's about the prophecy of my own mother's death. And as I went into, I think it was the fourth decade of the rosary, I asked Our Lady, um, out of each Hail Mary, to give my mother a big hug for me. Um, to tell my mother that I love her so much. And my mother actually would have sat behind here as a pilgrim a few times in her life. And I remember my mother got a, an anointing of the Holy Spirit behind us here at the grotto. My mom always told her the story about this heat coming down from the crown of her head to the tips of her toes. And she received this anointing, this interior peace, maybe not so much a physical healing, but an, an interior healing, which is the most important, the healing of the soul. My mother was so beautiful. Um, she was the love of my life. And she prayed for me so much in her life. And I know that it's via my mother's prayers that I now enjoy my faith. I know that through her prayers, whilst I was traveling the world, that this anointing came over me, that she sent heaven to protect me via her prayers, via her intercession. So I'm going to share this story. This is a bit of a personal story. And there's things that um, I suppose I'm open up. I'm only opening up to share. And I share these to give hope to other people that are looking in on this faith journey. Six months before my mother died, did I prophesy her death? That's the question here. I'm not saying that I did, but I'm going to tell you the story and I'll leave it to each individual looking in to think for themselves and to draw their own conclusions. Was it a coincidence or a God incidence? Bear with me. So yes, and my mother, God bless her, um, six months before she died, she fell and she fractured her spine and she was in hospital. And I remember I was pushing the doctors to get these scans done, you know, these MRIs done, because I knew my mum was suffering big time with her back and I knew that something was seriously up with my mum. And I just, I know because I suffer with back pain, which I offer up to Jesus <laughs> um, to console his sacred heart. Now, I remember one evening I went up to the hospital to see my mum. And as I was standing at the bottom of my bed, my two sisters, Lisa and Joanne, were standing left and right of my mother. And I just, this, this, this feeling come, this feeling come through my heart, this knowing come through my heart that my mother didn't have long left to live. Now, the thing about it was my mother was only, I think, 60 at the time, maybe 61. Yeah, maybe 61, I think. Now, I've had a friend um, my friend Darren and his mother, <clears throat> Margaret. And Margaret broke her back. Broke her back. 
and uh, Margaret went through the healing process of a broken back. And six months later, Margaret was healed, thanks be to God. And she's alive and kicking and well and swinging her disco knees. How you doing, Margaret, if you're looking into this video? Um, so the reason why I bring Margaret into this situation here is because it's not as if my mum's spine was fractured. It, it's not as if that the that her back couldn't heal, okay? So, but when I was at the bottom of the bed, I had this knowing that my mother was going to die, that she didn't have long left to live. In fact, I remember getting a little anxious at the bottom of the bed, and my mum says, I can't wait to get out of here to get back to the gym. And I looked at her and I went, Ma, see if I was here, because I was overseas at the time. If I was here, you wouldn't get out of the house for six months because it takes six months to heal your back. So anyways, I just remember having this knowing that no, mummy doesn't have long left to live. I remember my two sisters giving out to me either side of the bed because I was giving out to my mum, saying that if I was at home, she wouldn't be getting out for six months. Um, my poor mother, she was so beautiful. Um, I thank God that my mum was my mum. I thank God for the gift of my mother. I thank God for the gift of the faith that was instilled in me, even though many years I was away from God, even though many years I run away from the faith, buried in the world. I thank God for my mother's prayers, for my mother's love, for my mother's intercession. Okay. I was so sure that my mother was going to die. I went the very next day to my father 